So in this video, I want to show you some simple things you can do to slow down the aging process. Now, some of the information I'm going to talk about in this video is out of this book right here. I'm going to break it down really simply, but it's this book is called Oxidants in Biology. Fascinating read. You need a medical dictionary to get through it because there's a lot of biochemistry, but there's some gold nuggets in this book, okay? Um, and they're talking about the balance between antioxidants and oxidants, okay, in the environment. So you have this constant battle because if you're being exposed to all this oxidation, you can kind of compare this to a car rusting out. I mean, it's kind of weird that oxygen would create damage, but too much of it can be very, very damaging to your cells, okay? The mitochondria, which is at the heart of your metabolism, it's the energy factory, and it actually has an engine. It uses oxygen to break down fuel. So it actually releases oxidants, okay? Now, some of that is good for the body in that these oxidants that your body makes kills off microbes. But when the mitochondria and other parts of the cell become damaged and you're getting too much oxidation from that, that can actually destroy the cell and create all sorts of problems and set you up for even getting cancer. So there's a positive part of oxidation and there's a negative part. And the same thing goes with antioxidants, which counter the oxidation. You can get antioxidants from food and your body can make antioxidants. And that is called endogenous antioxidants. This means antioxidants that are made within your body as compared to exogenous antioxidants, which are antioxidants outside the body, okay? So from vegetables, for example. But a really, really important and misunderstood area is building up your antioxidant network and getting your body to make more antioxidants. So I'm gonna show you just a few things you can do to build up this network without taking external antioxidants. The hormone called melatonin uh, is a very powerful antioxidant, okay? This occurs when you're sleeping. So when it gets dark and there's less light coming into the eye, there's a, an entire cascade of things that happen in your brain, and one is you get a spike of melatonin. Melatonin actually gets rid of hydrogen peroxide. Maybe you have used hydrogen peroxide in the past. Let's say you had a cut and you want to sterilize it to kill the bacteria. You, you put the hydrogen peroxide in and it bubbles up and it kills off the microbes. Well, your cells actually make hydrogen peroxide to kill off microbes as well. But sometimes our bodies make too much hydrogen peroxide and that's very toxic to the body because it's creating too much oxidation. Well, if you have enough melatonin, this can counter that. And that's just one thing that it does. But I don't recommend going to the store and buying melatonin. What I am gonna recommend is just getting more sleep or take naps. Okay, so the second thing that they talk about in here is the difference between occasional exercise and regular exercise. Regular exercise, as in routine and on a regular basis, will build up your endogenous antioxidant network, okay? Now, initially, when you do exercise, let's say it's an, an intense workout, you're gonna generate tremendous amounts of oxidation. It's gonna break down the muscle tissue. That's considered bad, right? But as you do it over time, your body gets used to it. It starts to adapt and it starts to build up huge amounts of antioxidants to counter the stress or oxidation damage from exercise. So regular exercise on a consistent basis will help to build up your antioxidants and protect you against oxidation. And you are gonna start looking younger when you do this. Uh, and it could be as simple as walking every day, but routine regular exercise is very, very important. So we have high quality regular sleep or naps and regular exercise. It seems really, really simple. This next one is fasting. And I'm talking about regular fasting, as in intermittent fasting, because you can't just do fasting on a long-term basis because at some point you have to eat, right? But intermittent fasting would be a regular routine of combination of fasting and eating, and that produces a huge spike in your endogenous antioxidant network. An ideal pattern for you to work up to would be 20 hours of fasting in a four-hour eating window. So let's say, for example, you ate at three, and then the next meal would be at four, five, six, and seven, okay? So it would be four hours later. That would be like the eating window. But then you fast for 20 hours. That would be very, very beneficial. If you're new to my channel, I put a link 
below of how to do that. The benefit of fasting is something called autophagy. Autophagy means self-eating. So your body is actually recycling its own tissue. One of the bad effects from oxidation that causes aging or premature aging is what oxidation does to your proteins, okay? It creates what's called misfolded proteins. And these proteins kind of gunk up and they get stuck in the body. They don't exit the body that well and they clog up things between your neurons creating uh, memory problems and eventually Alzheimer's. They clog up the heart, they're in the eye, they're in the kidney, they're in the nervous system. So these misfolded proteins come from oxidation and also they actually create oxidation. They create a toxic effect in the body. And your body has a hard time getting rid of these because they're non-functional. Well, it just so happens that fasting through autophagy can take these misfolded proteins, put them into a garbage disposal, and start to break down these proteins, okay? There's actually detergents that your body uses and certain enzymes to break down this protein. And then the other side, it spits out brand new amino acids that your body can then use to rebuild. So fasting really slows down the aging process as well as stimulate certain genes that help repair. So here we have sleeping or napping, regular exercise, and intermittent fasting. These three are very, very, very powerful, and that's why I wanna put your attention on those, okay? The next thing to do is to avoid uh, excessive amount of oxidants. Now, a body makes enough oxidants for us to then get more externally. Um, iron, for example, like let's say, for example, you're taking a multi-supplement from the drugstore. Uh, read the label, make sure it doesn't have iron in it because that's one way to get the wrong type of iron. The thing about iron is it's very difficult to get rid of iron if there's too much. So you wanna avoid cooking in iron skillets, for example, and definitely don't take iron as a supplement. Unless you have, for example, some anemia, which you're low on iron and you tested it, in which case you can take a food-based iron which comes from like bovine liver, make sure it's grass fed. And of course, one of the biggest things that creates oxidation is high levels of sugar in the diet. Uh, even your blood sugars being high, that will just oxidate the, the eyes, kidney, the nerves, the brain. So uh, this is a real big one right here. Um, glycation, what is that? That is the combination between sugar and a protein. So if you're eating foods that are cooked with sugar and protein, that's really, really bad. Or you're consuming foods with fat and sugar together, heated, that would be very, very bad. That creates uh, some serious oxidation. So uh, that would be like um, uh, ice cream, for example, because you're cooking this fat with this sugar, uh, you're gonna get a lot of uh, glycation. And glycation also happens in our bodies. If you have high levels of blood sugar, and your body's 98.6, it can actually create glycation of your, your red blood cells. And one of the tests for that, uh, which is related to diabetes, is called A1C. That's glycation of the protein in your blood. So you wanna reduce the glycation simply by knocking out the sugar, okay? And then vegetable oils, especially the corn and the soy oil, very high in omega-6, uh, creates a lot of oxidation. Um, frequent meals will increase oxidation, thus the intermittent fasting. So let's say, for example, you join the gym, right? And they have this CrossFit class and they're working out every single day and you're 55 years old, very bad. You're gonna overtrain, it's too much exercise without much recovery. It's gonna create a lot of oxidation. And then we have cortisol. Having too much cortisol over a period of time without enough recovery is really bad. This has to do with stress. Um, also, if you're taking prednisone or cortisol or any medication, that can create some massive damage. And the damage it's creating is oxidation. Uh, so stress in general creates a lot of oxidation on your body. But if you're getting regular exercise and good sleep, you can easily counter the stress of life. But you need to look at the big picture and really look at the balance of these two. Okay, We want to build up your endogenous antioxidant network. And then of course, we have trans fats.
You want to avoid those. And then there's a lot of other things, avoiding chemicals, pesticides, GMO foods. All of that creates oxidation. And the last thing I want to just touch on is exogenous antioxidants. Um, raw vegetables, cruciferous. Usually you want to steam some of your cruciferous, but then have your salads raw. And that's part of the phytonutrients in cruciferous, which give additional health benefits that go beyond just vitamins and minerals. All right, guys, so that was your tip of the day. The next step is for you to go ahead and implement this. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.